February 27, 2013. Uh, the district received a fair rating, and we decided to do uh, a follow-up on it because of the large number of adverse findings. The fact that this is the third largest school district in the state of Missouri with an operating budget, I think, of $280 million a year. Uh, and there were some matters that we thought needed immediate attention. And there was also significant interest on the part of citizens who really instituted this audit, people like Eileen uh, and others who really uh, brought these issues to our attention. So we thought a follow-up audit would be uh, appropriate. Uh, in our initial audit, we had uh, many findings, but the areas of concern can really be divided into seven or eight areas, and that's what I'm going to focus on when I talk about the follow-up uh, results. First of all, we were concerned, and then probably the most problematic finding was relative to construction contracting. We were concerned about the sole sourcing of program management services, uh, out-of-scope change orders, questionable and excessive fees, and conflicts of interest. The next area we looked at was bond financing, where we saw conflicts of interest and a lack of competition as well. We looked at procurement cards, uh, found there was an inaccurate list of who has cards and people exceeding the limits. We looked at proceeding procedures, uh, found poor records and failure to issue receipts for non-cash non transactions. Uh, and there were problems with assets, too. This district has a lot of assets, a lot of inventory. There were poor records of inventory and capital assets, as well as fuel usage by people that have cars uh, provided by the district. And then there were also problems with, with reporting of attendance. Uh, those are the areas we focused on in our follow-up uh, inter interviews and uh, reviews of documents and, and transactions. Uh, we had our follow-up team in, which included Chris Vetter, who led the original audit, as well as Daryl Moore, who's a former Greene County prosecutor who leads all of my follow-up teams to make sure that things are done in a very rigorous uh, manner. Uh, I've got good news today, and it's nice for an auditor to be able to have good news. Um, I'm pleased to say that the school board, the superintendent, the administration, the school district as a whole have done an excellent and transparent job in implementing the recommendations that you made. Uh, the district CFO, uh, Kim Rooney, are you here today? Uh, did uh, uh, an excellent job. They served as liaisons with our office. They developed an internal action plan. They set up an online portal where citizens could track the implementation of each recommendation. Uh, our uh, follow-up process has four levels of compliance. We have implemented. It's not a very exciting sounding word, but that means everything we asked to be done was done. You could say fully implemented also, but we usually just reuse the word implemented. There's in progress, which means that there's a full commitment to fully implement the recommendations, but they just haven't all quite been completed yet, and we're confident that they will be. There's partially implemented, which means that some of what we asked for was implemented, but the district has decided not to do some of the other things we asked for. And then there's, of course, not implemented, which would be the lowest already you can get on a follow-up. Uh, we found that every single thing we asked to be done is either fully implemented or in progress, meaning it soon will be fully implemented. Uh, and I'm very pleased with those results. Um, let me go through now, uh, one by one, our follow-up report findings. And we didn't address every single finding, only the most significant. And there's a couple that have sort of been rendered moot by subsequent actions, so they're not reported on in the follow-up audit report. Let's talk about construction management first. Um, we found almost all the recommendations have been implemented, and some were in progress and will soon be fully implemented. There haven't been any solicitations for major construction since uh, our previous audit, so we can't say that another project is going on under new policies and procedures. But, but on March 7th, the board did approve policy 7130, which if fully followed, we believe will completely resolve the construction and program management issues. It provides that fees will be considered as part of the selection process, which was not previously part of it. Uh, there may be some negotiation that goes on afterwards depending on the scope of the project, but it was very important that you don't negotiate fees after you award the contract. It requires a detailed scope of work and specifications fully compliant bids, careful retention of records and of procurement and performance, the withholding of payments, till the, some payments till the completion of work, and the correction of deficiencies. And then there's also policies now 3170 and 7211, uh, which say the change orders must be in writing. Bid out if they're at another location. One problem we have with the issuing change orders for work done on one project from one location to another location, which is not normal process. That won't happen anymore. Uh, that there will be change order uh, bidding or in competition carefully considered uh, when there are significant change orders. Uh, and uh, fees have to be included in the proposals. Uh, and that there's board approval required for some actions, including change orders over $15,000. This is a much more rigorous and intensive process for managing construction. It's more competitive, make sure work is actually done, make sure that fees, fees are fair. Uh, and that's what we were wanting before, and we think we have that now. Um, one area that's in progress, we pointed out a potential $1.2 million in overpayments that occurred. 
Uh, I wouldn't even say overpayments. I would say they were double payments. They were payments twice for the for the same work. Uh, we did not pass judgment on whether those were legally recoverable, but we asked that that be looked into. My understanding is the district is retaining consultants who will soon report to the board as to whether those fees can be re re retained or, or recouped or not. Uh, that's why we put in progress rather than completed, uh, but we're comfortable that the process that's been set up is a good one, and if the fees are recoverable, they will be recovered. Um, there was also a conflict of interest of a board member to do a since resign. Uh, but they went beyond that. Um, training now has been implemented to make sure there are no conflicts of interest in the future going forward. Uh, and our analysis reveals that there are no conflicts of interest with any board members and the contractors at this time. So that's all very, very good. Uh, on the bond financing issue, uh, we had problems with the fact that the same provider was used both as the advisor and the underwriter. That was a, lack of, uh, that was a conflict of interest. There was also no competition. Uh, these were always negotiated. Uh, that, that recommendation that there, that there be competition uh, that recommendation that you not have these conflicts of interest has been fully implemented. Policy 3330 precludes any future conflict of interest and establishes competitive bidding uh, for uh, underwriting with limited and reasonable exceptions. Uh, for example, in a situation where there's going to be a lot of tax credits provided, you may want to have a specialist for that. You might not want to compete that out. We understand that. That's reasonable. But generally, competition is the rule, and lack of competition is the exception, which is what we want and what we expect when we audit the school district. Number three, procurement cards. That's been implemented. On May 16th, the Director of Purchasing presented the results of a review of the credit cards, made recommendations. There are a lot of recommendations. I'll give you a couple of examples. Uh, there were transaction limit reductions for 197 cards, temporary closure of 145 cards because of the summer. Why would they need to use the cards? 90 were permanently closed. And more important, there's a new review process for getting a procurement card to make sure the people who get them really need them and the limits that are on those are reasonable. So we're very pleased uh, with that result. Number four, uh, professional services. We were concerned that uh, they have a policy, 3170, which requires competition for professional services at certain levels, mostly over $7,500. Uh, we found that there were a number of contracts that had been let out for fuel, for auditing, and for other uh, services that were not competed according to their policy, um, and there had been a violation, uh, both of the human resources consultant and fuel card services contractor. Uh, that recommendation has also been implemented. The policy is now enforced, and it's actually been modified and strengthened to ensure compliance. Uh, and the first competition for legal services was held recently as well. So we're very pleased about that. We had a problem with receiving procedures, the lack of receipts for non-cash transactions, and poor just poor record keeping in general. Uh, that one's in progress. Uh, they're currently working on procedures that require receipts for both cash and non-cash transactions. Uh, and they also have a process to ensure those transactions are more easily audited, which we very much appreciated. My understanding is that will be fully implemented by later this fall or early in the spring of next year. Uh, we think that's good. It's, you know, it's a complex process, and it's okay that it's taken a little bit of time. Uh, capital assets and fuel usage. We had problems with poor inventory records, and there was no annual inventory taken. And I think I pointed out that the original delivery that inventory today is not podiums anymore. It's iPads and video equipment and things that can be easily stolen. I mentioned that we found $4 million missing in the Kansas City School District, and we wanted to make sure that type of thing did not happen at Rockwood. Uh, that is also in progress. There's a new policy, 5410, uh, inventory requirements that has what is referred to as a perpetual inventory online. It's constantly updated, so they always know what inventory they have. And there will also be a physical inventory for high value items each year with special attention. We really like this, being paid to uh, musical instruments and electronic equipment, which are the most often stolen uh, from school districts. So they're really going to put an extra emphasis on those, and we think that's very, very good news. Um, I will tell you, it's one of the most comprehensive inventory policies I've seen. Uh, I will probably recommend that other school districts adopt a similar one when I audit them in the future, so that everyone should be very pleased. My understanding is that the inventory that's going to be performed next year is going to be contracted out because they can't get it quite up to speed for the school district this year, but in future years it will be an in-house process where that inventory takes place and it will occur. On the fuel, we had an issue of lack of reconciliation between fuel pumped and Fuel reported uh, that has been implemented. There's real time mileage monitoring now and a reconciliation program that we consider very advanced relative to other school districts in the state. Um, we did not report, for example, on the issue with the superintendent's contract since there's a new superintendent, so you can find that in there. That was sort of a moot point. And finally, on attendance reporting and controls, that's also been implemented. Uh, they were unable to restrict the time period that attendance can be changed because of the computer software issue, but through policy 2310 adopted on May 2nd, each week district officials perform an analysis of attendance changes 
to be sure that it was legitimate. And this is an important issue because we found attendance fraud in other school districts across the state. Um, that's a very quick summary. You know I was here for over an hour the first time. Uh, I don't have to stay long when it's good news. Um, I will tell you that since I've been auditor, we've conducted over 300 audits. About 42 of